Welcome back, everybody. We are having way too much fun in the kitchen. You know why? Because Guy Fieri is here. Yeah. Yeah. And he is making a stuffed acorn squash, a recipe <laughs> from your good. new cookbook, Guy Fieri. Family Look food. The way you I roll know. that. Fieri. <laughs> That's because I'm Greek. Yes. That you got it then. Fieri. So you, you come from those last names that nobody can ever pronounce. No, correctly. they always come to me. They're yes, like, Debbie, you'll uh, say how, this do you, one. how do you oh, wait, exactly say, say your that. last name the way it's supposed to be said? Matenopoulos. That's just how oh, I was yeah, going to yeah, say yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, I was just going to say how. Debbie Matenopoulos and Guy Fieri. And we are hosting a show that goes across Italy and Greece. Yeah. Meanwhile, today you're making this acorn squash we're very excited about from your new cookbook. I'd like to take a look inside of that. You want to go cookbook. get right into it right off Let's the bat? Let's straight okay. into the cookbook real quick. What is that we're looking so at? So that's the uh, mac that's and heaven. cheese burger. That is heaven. So it's, 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 it looks it's like probably one of the key items I make. It's in all my restaurants, and I gave the recipe up to everybody because they've been asking for it forever. Wow. Okay, good. And this uh, is Spaghetti looks... squash. Now, I don't know if you're a spaghetti squash fan, spaghetti but that squash. with some roasted kale is the bomb. Little Parmesan cheese on top of that. Uh, as a salad, as a center of plate, you name it, you'll love it. And then here, well, I actually drew on the uh, artwork, and then they put it in all the books. <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> Year old in me. Um, but that's what we're going to do is we're going to take the acorn squash, which is one of my favorites of the squash family, and stuff it with some extra chick or extra turkey that we have left over, um, which I hate the word leftover, but just so right. people Repurpose. understand. Repurpose. Repurpose. Yes. yes. Um, but what, what happens? Let's start. I'm going to jump right into this. First, we're going to start off with some, some onions and some peppers. Okay. And the idea is how do we take something like turkey? We haven't branded it as one specific ethnicity. Like it's not a heavy ginger flavor, a heavy spice flavor. And how can we take that and repurpose it into meals throughout the rest of the week? Well, you have a, a chapter in the book that's all about repurposing. Exactly. Exactly. So here we have, so you take this turkey, and I did save a little bit of the bacon with it as well, but we'll drop this turkey right in, and I'm going to tell you something. When you wrap bacon around turkey, what you're doing is just moisturizing the turkey, adding the flavor as, as it goes. Just take, check it and just make sure it's, I want to make sure you are having just one piece. Not you, you said something that I don't understand. Yes. You said, I saved the bacon. Yes. I don't, that's great. Oh, restraint. there's no bacon that's ever I don't know how you would Go do ahead, that. and there's a little snack bowl for you right there. How do you, so, how do you consider? What ends up happening that's is when you wrap good. that bacon know, around there, and it cooks, I want you to just think about the basting that you typically do with the baster when you're eating with the, with the fat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is doing it for you the entire time. It infuses all that fat oh, right back into the Outrageous. Turkey. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so, so onions and peppers, a little bit of the bacon, uh, a bunch of the turkey breast. Now, I also did one with a thigh over here, because you should really, I believe, cook the thighs and the breast separately. These take a little bit longer. Okay. If people have that question all the time, I turkey, it's, I got one part that's cooked, one part yeah, that's not. True. Separate them, cook them separate timing. Might not look like the iconic turkey at no. the table, yeah. but it sure will taste it's great. It's going to taste better. So you say, you wrote this book. You say it's based on your experiences cooking with your family. Explain. Well, you know what? Whenever I can get my kids to stop playing sports or doing all the things they're doing, we have one called All Hands on Deck, where I'll say, hey, we're going to make tamales. Okay, Everybody loves tamales, but it's a process. Yeah. So everybody gets a job, and we get together, and we work, and we make it. Or we're making kebabs. Okay. Um, any of these types of oh, events, when you can that. cook with your kids and cook with your family. Aww. We need, we, yeah, they're there. That's my little guy, Ryder. Oh. Uh, my son, Hunter. Um, they're in constant battle. Uh, my wife, Lori. That is a real picture. Oh now, listen, God, I'm dusting that. this. <laughs> dusting your That's daughter. father of the year right there. <laughs> That's father of the year. Speaking of father of the year, your dad's a pretty big fan of yours, wrote the forward to your book, and you say he is your culinary inspiration. My uh, my dad growing up uh, was the guy. We didn't have traditions in the Fieri family. We just made. We just had what my dad made, um, and it was always something crazy and unique. Lamb, leg of lamb, but with the hoof on. Um, <laughs> oh, no, trust me. So we go through this whole relationship with him and food and he was the one that always told me take chances and have a backup and know what you're doing and be ready to improvise and that's the way I learned to cook from him. Both my parents are great cooks and I was eating sushi at the age of seven. Yeah, seven, eight years okay. old. Okay, what let me tell you what I've got here. There's a Brussels sprout. I'm, I'm going fast. I'm cooking, trying to get things. i got a project to do, and it's stuff an acorn squash, okay. folks. So <laughs> let me, onions, peppers, garlic, the uh, the turkey, the extra turkey that we had, and some of the bacon. Then in some farro. I love oh, farro. Wow. If I make farro, I always make extra, okay. so I have some. You guys, bring in the food. Okay. Okay. It's starting to what, smell too good. Uh, what is farro? Oh. Farro oh. is one of the oldest grains known to man. Right. It, is, barley. it is a fantastic grain. It's kind of like a wheat Thank berry, you. so you'll taste in there. So we've got the yes. farro in there, and then I also had some Brussels sprouts made extra. If you're into the process of cleaning those Brussels sprouts so and cooking good. them, you might as well go to the next yeah. step. Now, 
a little bit of cranberry. Oh, cranberry. Well, wow. think about it kind of in a stuffing you know, energy. Yeah. Everything that's holiday. Little Parmesan oh cheese. Oh, my goodness. We'll get in some fresh wow. herbs and a little chili, Whoa. just a little chili flake, okay? So yummy. Dust a little chili so flake so in there. Always got to have fresh herbs. You want that really bright, fresh note of that. Um, oh, so wow, some parsley. And a touch of some salt and pepper. Mm. Want to grab that acorn squash for me there? Sure. So you say the red pepper aioli is the key here? Little, I listen. I got. You got to have all the keys. You got to have the acid. You got to have the spice. You got to have. You got to have the salt. Now we bring this over. Oh my gosh! And here's the beauty of it. If you have leftover stuffing. The great thing is, is what a salad this will make. This over the top of some baby arugula. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, look at that cheese. A little Parmesan and cheese. And you know, I have to point out that the fact that you're using Brussels sprouts, and you talked about the acorn squash and the Brussels sprouts. I just last week did a segment on Brussels sprouts and said, if you make them right, you will love them. People on, have never made yeah. them right. Uh, absolutely. Sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. We'll take this, pop it in the oven, really let it come together. All that flavor coming out. I'm trying. There we go. Oh, How that drum roll. Oh, yeah. We've already yeah. roasted. Oh, We've already roasted the acorn squash. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here <laughs> for the rest of the show. Um, we roasted the acorn squash ahead of time, and that's one of the tricks that I like to show people. Cut it open, seat it. Go ahead and throw a little sauce on this. On top? You call that the kitchen yeah, sink, the squash, the kitchen It almost sink. has that kitchen sink. Want, the, beauty, the beauty of it is, is whatever you have that you that you have more of, again, not wanting to use the word leftover, whatever you yeah, have more, more of, right. take it and think about it. And if we haven't already put the sauce on it, like a lot of times when we're doing chicken cutlets, if I'm yeah. grilling them, I won't go hit them with the teriyaki sauce because who knows tomorrow we want to make take that and turn it into a uh, like a curry salad to go on a sandwich. Oh, then, mm -hmm. yeah. So don't sauce it already. Don't make Marinate it a specific way. Give it a little bit more of an open envelope, mm -hmm. and then you'll have more to play with. Get in there, guys. Tell me what you think. Tell Get me in there. Think. Let's go. Uh, guys, uh, wow. by the way, this is delicious. 